coding and categorization are important. They are the important process in qualitative data analysis. They involve organizing and making sense of the data by systematically labeling and grouping segments of information into meaningful categories or codes. These processes are used in various qualitative research methods that is such as Thematic analysis, content analysis, and grounded theory. Coding. What is coding? It's the process of assessing labels or codes to specific sections of the data. Codes are short descriptive tags that represents a concept, theme, or idea presents in the data. The purpose Coding helps in organizing and structuring the data, making it easier to manage and analyze. It allows researchers to identify patterns, themes, and insights that emerge from the data. Next come after coding is categorization. So categorization is a process of grouping related codes in border categories based on similarities, connections, or shared themes. What are the purpose? It helps in organizing and condensing the numerous codes into higher level themes or concepts. Providing a more structured and thematic overview of the data. Types of coding. In vivo coding. Using participants' own words as codes to preserve the authenticity of their expressions. Now, what is vivo coding? Within vivo coding, a first cycle coding method in qualitative analysis, you derive codes from the data itself. You derive in the vivo codes where it utilizes language terminology used by the participants rather than the researched derived. This allows codes to reflect the perspective and actions of the participants. In vivo coding helps researchers attain an in-depth understanding of the direct stories, ideas, and meanings that are expressed by research participants. So in vivo coding also goes by alternative names, verbatim coding, literal coding, and natural coding. When should I use vivo coding? This should be in your mind. So there are reasons that you can consider when using vivo coding, or you can say a verbatim coding. So when using an inductive coding method, which is grounded style of coding, where codes are derived from data, also when you are capturing an emic perspective or when you're utilizing grounded theory, when conducting on a group of participants that come from a particular culture, subculture, where it would be important to utilize their spoken words or phrases. So how or what is the process of doing in vivo coding? So whenever you're doing vivo coding, you read through the data and name codes based on words and phrases utilized by the participants in vivo coding exam. When we interviewed a research about the research analysis process, parts of transcript have been edited by privity. I think that's one of the fears with people doing interviews research in the amount of data they'll have to analyze. They go, I'm going to make such a mess. It's going to feel overwhelming. So I've just wasted so much of time and I've got no result. So this has increased the anxiety. About what I have to do because I've made the analysis so massive. I guess the journey is about taking massive accounts of data and breaking it down. You'll have so many little bits of information everywhere that you can use and rearrange and tidy up in the end. So in such transcript, the codes that you give us feel overwhelming, increase anxiety, bits of information. So as you can see, the researcher derives the code name from the literal words in the transcript itself. 
the codes captures the essence of the participants was communicating. So in vivo coding is just one out of many ways to code when analyzing qualitative research. Descriptive coding, creating labels that summarizes the content of the data without any interpretation. It's a first cycle method of coding that involves reading through qualitative data and coding passage according to the topic. Descriptive codes are option in the form of a noun and summarizes the topic of the data. Tagging and using hashtag in social media is a widely used version of descriptive coding. Descriptive codes identify the topics but don't derive further meaning from the data or add much insight into what the participant is thinking to derive meaning from the data. Use alternative coding methods such as in vivo coding or values coding. So the result of descriptive coding is categorized inventory or index of data organized by topic. This can be used for further analysis and interpretation in further rounds of coding. When should I use descriptive coding? So whenever you are a beginner of qualitative research, when you have a wide variety of data, forms, transcript field notes, journals, documents, diaries, correspondence, et artifact, video, etc. If you are tracking the longitudinal changes across multiple studies, when you want to organize a large data set by topic area, now how to do descriptive coding? Read through your data and identify the topics that surface in the data. Create codes for each topic. Collate all the experts together that are related to each descriptive code. Now that you have an index of topic, use other coding methods to derive meaning from the data. Now, interpretative coding. Assigning codes that reflect the researcher's interpretation and understanding of the data. Interpretative coding is a qualitative data analysis technique. Interpretative coding is a qualitative data analysis technique used in thematic analysis, grounded theory, and other interpretative research approaches. Unlike descriptive coding, which involves labeling segments of data with straightforward description, interpretative coding goes beyond surface level and hence seem to understand the underlying meaning, interpretation, and nuances within the data. In interpretative coding, the focus is on interpreting the participant's perspective, values, and beliefs to gain a deeper understanding of the research topic. It involves making sense of the data by considering the context, cultural influence, and the participant's subjective experiences. Interpretative coding aims to capture the richness and complicity of human experience and behavior. Coding process. Researchers read or review the data multiple times to identify meaningful units or segments. These units could be phrases, sentences, paragraphs, or entire sections. They then assign relevant codes to these units based on their content and meaning. You should consider using interpretative coding in your qualitative data analysis when your research objectives align with certain criteria, like exploring complex phenomena. Your the co interpretative coding is well suited for exploring complex and multifaceted phenomena, where the focus is on understanding the depth and richness of human experiences, beliefs, and behaviors. Then understand when you want to understand the subjective perspectives. So if your research aims to capture the interpreted the subject perspectives, meanings and interpretation of participants, interpretative coding is a valuable approach. When emphasizing context and culture, this coding allows you to consider the broader social, culture and historical context in which the data was collected offer a deeper understanding of how these factors influence participants' perspective. Developing new theories or concepts when your research is exploratory and seeks to generate new theories, 
concepts or insights, interpretative coding allows for a flexible and creative approach to analyzing the data. Next is embracing complexity and nuances. If your research topic involves the intricate relationship, contradictions, and tensions, interpretative coding can help you explore and make sense of the complexity and nuances within the data. Next, using flexible analysis. Interpretative coding provides researchers with the flexibility to adapt their analysis approach as new themes and patterns emerge from the data promoting iterative and reflexive analysis, then acknowledging subjectivity and reflexivity. When you want to embrace the subjectivity of researchers and recognize the potential impact of their perspective on the analysis, interpretative coding allows for reflexivity in interpreting the data. Studying cultural or humanistic research. So interpretative coding is commonly used in cultural and humanistic research, where understanding the meanings and interpretations of human experience is central to the research objectives. It's essential to remember that the choice of coding approach depends on the research questions, the nature of the data, and the goals of the study. If you are interested in going beyond surface level descriptions and gaining a deeper understanding of participants, perspectives, interpretative coding is a valuable and appropriate technique to consider. So here we end with coding and what is the six takeaways that we are taking from coding in qualitative data. So coding is a process of labeling and organizing your qualitative data to identify themes. After you code your qualitative data, you can analyze it just like a numerical data. Then inductive coding without a predefined code frame is more difficult, but less prone to bias than deductive coding. Now code frames can be flat, easier and faster to use or hierarchical, more powerful or organized. Your code frames need to be flexible enough that you can make the most of your result and use them in different contexts. When creating codes, make sure they cover several responses, contrast one another, and strike a balance between too much and too little information. Lastly, consistent coding is equal to accuracy. Remember this, because establish coding procedures and guidelines and keep an eye out for definitional drift in your qualitative data analysis. Now, let's deeply understand the types of categorization. First is hierarchical. Hierarchical categories are also known as hierarchical coding or nested coding, refer to coding structure in qualitative data analysis, where codes are organized in hierarchical manual. This means the codes are grouped into product categories and subcategories based on their relationship and similarities. So the hierarchical structure also allow researchers to create a systematic and organized representation of the data with higher level themes encompassing more specific sub themes. The hierarchical categories in qualitative data analysis can be visualized as tree-like structure where the higher level categories are the top root of the tree and the lower level subcategories branch out beneath them. So research topic, that means factors influencing job satisfaction in a workplace, work environment, physical workplace, office culture or work-life balance. Then comes the second category of job responsibilities, where there is task variety, autonomy, workload, then relationships with colleagues, team collaboration, supportive colleagues, leadership. So in this factor influencing job satisfaction in a workplace example, the main research topic is root category. The three main higher, higher level categories represents different factor influencing job satisfaction. 
each higher level category has sub categories those are lower level that further details specific aspects related to the main theme hierarchical categories provides a structured framework for organizing qualitative data making it easier for researcher to manage analyze and interpret the data the approach enables researchers to identify patterns explore relationship between themes and develop a comprehensive understanding of the research topic it is particularly useful when the data is diverse and contain multiple levels of details as it allows researchers to capture both the broad and specific aspects of the data in the coherent manner next is emergent categories so here allowing categories to emerge naturally from the data without predetermined structures emergent categories are a type of coding in qualitative data analysis that arise directly from the data during the analysis process unlike predefined or predetermined categories emergent categories are not predetermined before the data is collected instead they emerge or organically from the data itself the researchers allow themes or categories to emerge naturally as they engage with the data in an inductive manner the process of identifying emergent categories involves a close and iterative examination of the data to identify patterns connections and themes that were not initially anticipated researchers remain open minded and flexible during the analysis allowing the data to guide the development of categories so there are characteristics of emergent categories one is inductive approach so in emergent categories are derived from an inductive approach of data analysis where researchers let the data speak for itself without imposing preconceived notions or theoretical frameworks discovery of novel themes emergent categories often represent novel themes or aspects that were not previously considered or explored in the research question reflexivity researchers continuously reflect on their own biases and preconceptions to ensure that they do not inadvertently influence the emergence of categories iterative process so identifying emergent categories is an iterative process where researchers revisit the data refine the codes and update categories as new insights emerge contextual sensitivity emergent categories are contextually sensitive capturing the unique aspects of the data and the participants experiences so using emergent categories can be particularly beneficial in exploratory or qualitative research with open ended question as it allows researchers to discover unexpected themes and gain a deeper understanding of the research topic it encourages researchers to remain open to new possibilities and to be receptive to the rich and complex nature of the data researchers can complement emergent categories with other coding approaches such as predefined categories or thematic coding to create a more comprehensive and nuanced analysis of the qualitative data by combining multiple coding strategies researchers can be better capture the full spectrum of insights and meaning presence in the data the last in the types of categorization is predefined categories using pre-existing theoretical frameworks or concepts to guide the categorization process predefined categories also known as predetermined categories are a type of coding in qualitative data analysis where the categories or themes are established before the data collection process begins this is unlike emergent categories which are derived directly from the data during analysis predefined categories are predetermined based on existing theories that means prior research or research objectives so there are certain categories also in predefined uh, categories the characteristics that we will study in this category is first is deductive approach 
So predefined categories follow a deductive approach unlike the emergent category where the data analysis where researcher starts with predetermined concepts and theme that they intended intend to investigate in the data. Then is theoretical framework. So the predetermined categories are often grounded in the existing theoretical framework or prior research findings that, that is making it easier to compare and build upon previous studies. Conceptual clarity. Predefined categories are well-defined and specific, allowing for a systematic and focused analysis of the data. Research objectives. The categories are aligned with the research objectives, with the specific research questions that the study aims to address. Facilitating comparison. Predefined categories enable researchers to compare finding across different studies that uses similar concepts or themes. Now, when to use this predefined categories? Where there's a confirmatory research. Predefined categories are suitable for confirmatory research where the aim is to test existing theories, hypotheses, or concept, or building a prior research. So if your research builds on previous studies that have established relevant categories or themes, using predefined categories can facilitate continuity and comparison. Now, when specific research objectives are there, so when your research objectives require a focused investigation, of particular concepts or theme, this is the best analysis and this can help you guide the analysis more efficiently. And then standardization. So if you want to ensure standardization and consistency in your coding across multiple researchers or studies, predefined categories can provide a common framework. Limited time or resources. In case where time or resources are limited, Predefined categories can streamline the data analysis process and help focus on specific aspects of interest. So, however, it is important to note that using only predefined categories may limit the exploration of new and unexpected themes that could emerge from the data. Researchers can complement predefined categories with other coding approaches, such as emergent coding, to capture a more comprehensive understanding of the data and gain insights that go beyond existing concept or theories. So after coding the data, researchers review the codes to identify patterns and connections. The group similar codes together to form categories, ensuring that each code fits coherently with a single category. Coding and categorization are iterative processes, meaning researchers may revisit and redefine the codes and categories as they progress in their data analysis. These processes facilitate the systematic exploration of data, leading to a deeper understanding of the research questions and hence generating valuable insights and themes for further interpretations and reporting. This has given you a quite great insight of coding and categorization very deeply by making you understand each category of it.